It was a wild Sunday at Walsh Gymnasium in South Orange, New Jersey, as Seton Hall upset Marquette. I'll take you behind the scenes and you can talk to Tony Bazella of Seton Hall. You can talk to Megan Duffy of Marquette and Chloe Murata as well, who had a career day for the Golden Eagles. Lockdown Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hi, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Megdahl, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. Locked On Women's Basketball brought to you today by Prize Picks, and of course, always brought to you by the incredible team that I have together at The Next, thenexthoops.com, where we do incredible work covering women's basketball 24-7, 365. Make sure you subscribe, sign up for our free emails, or go ahead and become a paid subscriber, $9 a month, $72 a year, thenexthoops.com. And it was a wild time at Walsh Gymnasium in South Orange, New Jersey. Seton Hall comes away with an 82-78 win. Lauren Park Lane, otherworldly, just took over this game down the stretch. 31 points, made the plays necessary to win. So I talked to a few people, and I want to kind of take you inside this because we're going to learn a lot about what the Big East this year is by what Seton Hall does and what Marquette does. We had a chance to talk to Tony Bazella. We had a chance to talk to Megan Duffy, and we had a chance to talk to Chloe Murata. And before I take you over to those conversations, I just don't want to lose sight of what Chloe Murata has become. 30 points, a career high on Sunday, 12 rebounds, as efficient as she is intelligent on the court. She is one to watch, my friends. So do not lose out on that. And I'll just leave you with one thing. Jordan Kane, 5'11", plays the point shooting well over 40% from three, everything you'd want in a WNBA player. If she's not in a camp next spring, something has gone wrong. So without further ado, here are my conversations with Tony Bazella, Megan Duffy, Chloe Murata. You're listening to Lockdown Women's Basketball. I'm Howard Megdahl. Absolutely. I thought, uh, I thought that was a really hard-fought game. Obviously, you know, my respect for Marquette is utmost. Uh, they're a tremendously, you know, well-coached, physical um, team that played outstanding basketball, and we knew we'd have to play our best game of the year to beat them, and we did, um, especially rebounding the basketball. I mean, to out-rebound them really says a lot about our heart and our desire of our kids. I was really proud of everyone, obviously, but. You know, Azana Baines really, you know, is in week three since she's come back from her injury. She's still feeling herself. She said to me, I'll do whatever it takes for us to win. And she went in there and played amazing basketball. Great defense, rebounding, talked, ran the floor hard. I mean, I'm just so proud of her. And Amari Wright, I, I think everyone who watched this play sees how good a team we are because of Amari. And um, I, I give, she made the play of the game, getting that steal, and uh, she's just such a great presence out there. Um, you know, obviously LP was LP, Sydney was Sydney, you know, but we got some great production. Kate Satterfield was fantastic. You know, Shea Higgins is one of the best guards we've ever recruited. She's a fantastic person, player, and uh, I was really happy. Jayla Jordan gave us um, a couple of great minutes, and um, you know, the kids were ready to play. I was really proud of them. I remember does a normal great job. Um, it was a great win for our program to be a nationally ranked team, but more importantly, to win a Big East game um, was really important at this stage. So, Lauren Park Lane has four straight games with 22 plus points. Uh, can you put into words just how much she needs this team and how important she is to the program? And Lauren's so important to this team and this program, but you know, it wasn't even just a point today. She played 39 minutes under intense pressure, the ball on their hands, guarding their other team's best shooter who didn't make a three until the last shot of the game. Like, whatever I asked her to do, she does. And she's just an amazing young woman, and it's why we're successful because of her leadership, um, as much as her play. To be honest with you, 
In terms of what you get out of her defensively, I mean, you put her on uh, Jordan Kane at different points, you got, you know, eight inches on her. Is it really just a question of knowing she's going to go out and do whatever it is you need her to do? You know, Howard, Lauren does whatever it takes to win the game. Like, if she just wants to get 15 assists and she thinks that's what we need, that's fine. And really, the streak has started. Our, our successful streak was, you know, Coach Chicago had a real heart-to-heart -heart with it, Lauren. And um, I said it on your uh, uh, wonderful podcast, The Next, which is great, everyone should listen to it. I, I said, she said to Lauren, you have got to assert yourself. Stop trying to please everybody else. Please yourself, and that'll please everybody else. And since then, she's really taken off. And you know, to Lauren Park Lane's credit, she listened to what Coach DeFalco said, mm -hmm. and that's because they do have a special relationship. And that's just the other part of it, is just she took over down the stretch. And do you, do you feel like that was part of that conversation? Is that kind of the next step for her? We know she always could take over, but it feels like now, in, every, every game now, she is taking over. She is, and Howard, I th she thought she took over last year at the uh, second half of the year, and really in the NIT run that we had. But she's just such a wonderful kid. She knew we had so many new kids. She's trying to get everyone involved and everything. And, and at some point, we were like, listen, you gotta be you, be you. We always say, do your job. Well, her job is to be her. And uh, she does a great job at it. Um, and she's just starting to slowly take her game higher and higher and higher. But it's hard work though. She's in the gym all the time. It's not by mistake. I couldn't know. The last period especially, she made a lot of what you would call senior plays. Yes. You know, Ray, you make a great point. She did make senior plays. At the end of the day, your seniors have to play. Sydney, her, Maya Bembry. You know, those guys got to come through for us. And, 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 they, and they have. Um, and they will all year because they're going to come in here, work hard. I mean, you have to remember, we got in 2 o'clock in the morning on Saturday because we flew in from Xavier. You know, we had a walkthrough. We didn't even get to practice. The kids said, listen, can we do a little bit of a workout? We did a 30-minute workout with them, which was great. They wanted to do it. We did it. And then we just prepared. And then we just came back today, walked through some stuff in the morning. So, you know, the kids really battled through a lot, but they persevered, and that's why I'm proud of them. I really am. For, for Marquette, Chloe Murat has obviously been an important player for a long time. It, it seems like she's at a different level now. That was a career high today with 30 points and 12 boards. You know, what are you seeing out of her that's allowing her to take the next step? Well, I, I think Murat has always been a, you know, a tremendous you know, competitor, you know, physical player, did all the dirty work, but she's continued to work on her skills. Mm -hmm. And she showed that, and we just talked about, as a senior, you have to step up. And they're ranked 24th in the country, yes, because of Jordan King, yes, because of Liz Carlin, but really because of Claudia Murata just as much as everyone. She's a wonderful defender as well as an offensive player, mm -hmm. and now she's starting to really get her own thing. We had no answer for her. We really didn't. It's not because of our bad defense. It's because of her good offense mm -hmm. and how she played. And, you know, they're going to be right there at the end of the year. They could beat anyone in our league, and they're one of the best teams in the country. Um, and a lot of it's because of Claudia. Coach, you start off 2-0 in Big East play, now you go out of conference again, you play Ryder and you travel down to UCF. How do you, you know, Big East play is obviously very different than out of conference play. It's, I think it's one of the toughest conferences in all of the country. How do you make that adjustment if there is any adjustment? No, it is. It is the Big East is one of the toughest team conferences in the country. We have four teams ranked right now. St. John's is undefeated, beating Creighton today. We're obviously a very good basketball team. You just named six teams. Everyone in our league has had a positive um, non-league win-loss record. Um, I, we're going to give them off tomorrow, and, and, and they well deserve it, and the whole staff needs to be off because we've worked really hard. we spent a lot of time on, you know, Friday night after Xavier, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, Sunday morning, preparing for this game. And league is so hard. You know, we need a day off. But then, you know, we wanted to make a hard schedule. Ryder comes in. They're a solid team in the match. They're very well coached. You know, for us to continue to achieve our goals, we're going to have to be ready to play. But I told the kids, enjoy today, enjoy tomorrow, and let's get back to work on Tuesday. Sydney Cooks, in terms of what she does for you, is this the version of her that you need for uh, having success here in the Big East? Yeah, I think, you know, Sydney was disappointed with herself because I think, you know, she felt early in the game she wasn't getting some of the position that she would normally get, mm -hmm. and she was just kind of a little fatigued at some points today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she made the big baskets when we need them at the end of the game. She makes the big rebounds when we need them at the end of the game. And she's also a team player. She's cheering for Jayla Jordan in there. She's cheering for Azana Baines in there. She's cheering for Maya Bembry in there when they're playing her position. She doesn't care. She wants to win. That's why we win, because of LP and Sydney to start it off as our captains. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Locked on Women's Basketball is brought to you by Prize Pitch. Prize Pitch gives you the opportunity to test your own knowledge 
against yourself. Pick two to five players, and if they go on to score more or less than their prize pitch projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. It's not competing against other people. It's you versus the projection. Prize Pitch offers projections on any sport you watch, everything from women's college basketball to the WNBA to National Women's Soccer League, NBA, NFL, MLB, you name it. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. So download the Prize Pitch app or go to prizepitch.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. We've got an offer for you. 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked on. If you deposit 100, Price Picks gives you 100. 50, they give you 50. Use code Locked on, L O C K E D O N, for that instant deposit match up to $100. Price Picks. So, just in terms of the overall offense and the fact that, you know, Chloe is so much a co facilitator, feels like with Jordan, how much of that is, you know, you think, you know, uh, co design and, you know, something similar to say what Connecticut has done through the years with Jasmine Thomas and Alyssa Thomas? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, we, we try and uh, recruit versatile players mm -hmm. that can obviously score, can rebound, um, and be facilitators. And so we try and really work in practice on, on being. Um, you know, multi-dimensional, you can get in the paint, kick it out to our shooters, mm -hmm. you know, having Chloe Murata, the fact that she can play multiple positions and, and really move the ball um, helps our offense for sure. 30 was a career high for her, you know, 30 and 12 in a game, um, you know, where she really, you know, Tony was saying, we just didn't have an answer for her. What's allowed her to do that? She's always been a glue player for you, but she's really gotten, it seems like, to another level this year so far. Uh, Chloe's been great for us. Her leadership, her intensity on both sides of the floor, she can fill a stat sheet. She always has. I think yeah. now she's just getting more opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. um, she's very focused and driven on her, you know, COVID fifth year here at Marquette. <laughs> and, um, you know, she wants to win more than anything, and she'll do whatever it takes to help our team, whether that's score and rebound are the other team's best player, so she's, she's a, a joy to coach. We talked about this at Big East Media Day. You know, kind of the next step for Jordan was hyper-efficiency from three. I, I know they didn't fall today, um, but she was came in at 45%. I mean, yeah. that is that is a level that can play at the next level in the league. You know, do you feel like she's doing what is necessary to make sure her name is called in April? Yeah, Jordan's continuing to grow her game. Um, she really worked on her three ball in the offseason and mm -hmm. just confident to shoot it. Um, when she had a three-level score, uh, that means a lot in our league, right? Being able to score in different ways, so she continues to do that. Have you talked to her about your own experience with that, and do you feel as if, you know, that can help her to, have, to kind of navigate what she could do? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always, um, as much knowledge as I can give, obviously, I get to push her every day. I'm just really appreciative of what she does for her program, and she's a selfless kid, so you have a kid coming in ready to work and, and thinks about this team 24-7. It's easy to get somebody like that better. And then just in, in terms of overall where you guys have been so far, you have obviously some, you know, really significant early wins, and even, you know, the, the loss to UCLA, I think, opened a lot of people's eyes to be able to do that on the neutral court and be able to take them to OT. Do you feel as if um, you have a statement that you've already been able to make here early on about where Marquette can be this season? Uh, I just think we're trying to become the best version of ourselves. we got a great schedule, non-conference, and then obviously our league is stronger than ever this year. Sure. Um, quality wins is always important, um, but again, we're on a different mission to get better every day. We're obviously a little disappointed with how things went today, but we'll learn a lot and keep moving forward. Coach, I appreciate Locked On Women's Basketball, your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest story of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. So, first of all, just congratulations. You know, I, I know obviously not in the circumstance you want to do it, but to put up 30 and 12, 30 being a career high, just take me through if you feel as if there's another level that you reached in terms of comfort, where you're finishing on the floor offensively. I think um, Seton Hall plays kind of a, a different type of defense, right? They like to sag, they like to um, come off certain players, but you got to be confident when you're out there. Um, if you're not confident, they're going to take advantage of it. And there were some moments tonight where they did take advantage of it for sure. Um, I think, uh, you know, just following the game plan, we executed well. My teammates found me off of down screens and whatever it was, and then I just got to be confident to hit it. I have seen a lot of players through the years who are connected. The way in which you and Jordan are connected and find each other on the court is just next level is in what I've seen. You know, what is that at this point? Is it just instinctive as much as anything else just from all your time together? I mean, we play 
played together for like for four years. Right. Um, she's been my point guard for four years too, so I mm. think we've gained that chemistry. Um, Coach does a really good job in practice. We work on that chemistry constantly. Mm. Our passes, what the reads are going to be, um, where Jordan's going to cut, where she's going to get her openings. Um, you know, they're they're going to be really tight on her every single game in the Big East, right? So where can I get her the ball the easiest? There's a lot of similarities in your game and saying Alyssa Thomas because you're playing big, but you are. I, I, I mean, at the very least, you're co-facilitator with Jordan on this. You know, and do you feel like that way? Do you feel like she is the point guard? Do you feel like you guys are uh, together in charge of kind of facilitating this offense? Yeah, I think like uh, Liza as well and yeah. some other guards that, that come up and like really facilitate the offense really well. I think Jordan has a really good steady, steady mind. So I think we definitely have our strengths to each other that mm -hmm. we bounce off with each other. But when it comes to, you know, handling the ball and um, knowing what plays to call, she does a really good job at that. I know we've talked about your desire to play professionally at the next level. In terms of Jordan and what you see out of her, um, you know, the opportunity, number one, number two, like her length, you know, she's 5'11", but it seems like her wingspan's almost like 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 yeah. Is that, I mean, that seems like the modern guard of what you're looking for. Is that what you see out of her? Yeah, absolutely. She's definitely going to have a chance to play at the next level. Um, I think if she gets the opportunity, she's going to take advantage of that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, she'll be really successful where she goes. In terms of this team and the success you've had so far, I'm, you know, what, what do you take out of a game like this in order to learn from it and, uh, you know, bring that forward into your, you know, your upcoming games? Yeah, it's still really early in the season. Um, the Big East is obviously really competitive, and we know that. Um, but coming in, just after this loss, we're going to really have to come back, watch the film, and then uh, work even harder to get better. Um, I think even win or lose, we always work hard to get better. And we got non-conference coming up on Wednesday, right. um, so it's a quick bounce back and um, keep our spirits high, and our leaders got to talk to our team. Chloe, I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to Lockdown Women's Basketball. As always, you can join us six days a week, five days a week, Monday through Friday, talking all things women's basketball. Saturday, of course, every Saturday, the WNBA Draft Show. Uh, we will be joining you this week. I'm not going to reveal who, but some very exciting college basketball coaches coming your way tomorrow and Thursday. So until then, I am Howard Magdal. In fact, I'll be even then, still Howard Magdal, wishing you a wonderful day. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. 